<clears throat> Paul with Al taking over for, for Gary, just you know, one year eyes, you know, with his pedigree, you know, makes him a good fit to lead that running backs room. Yeah, I think, you know, when when you're you're thinking through it and, and you know, first of all, you know, it's, it's you're talking about the coach and you also spend a lot of time thinking about the group. You know, what does the group need? And then who would be good for that? And then who's good for, from the coach's end, who's a guy that can teach and, and, and help them to improve. And, you know, I've always been impressed, you know, ever since I've had a chance to really be with and work with Al. And then I, I really appreciate and, and like the, the group of running backs that we have. And, you know, kind of got a, a, a mix of guys in there, but, um, you know, it's a good group. It's a talented group. You know, this spring, you know, we've got three of them that won't be doing much in, the, in spring practice, but um, I, I think it's a good fit for them. I think, you know, certainly, you know, Al's got a great understanding of offensive football. And, and I think, you know, we all know he played in the offensive line, but you know, one of the things that I've always been impressed with Al is kind of how he sees the whole game and been in positions where, you know, coordinating and then recently being a head coach and, you know, where he's, he's not just a coach that, you know, some line coaches might just throw on the end zone view, right? Al's always been looking at both of them and, and I think the way that he communicates and, and guys know, I think coach, I think players want, you know, few things from their, their coach. They want to know that the coach cares about them and they want to know that the coach can help them get better as a player. And there's no question in my mind, Al truly does care about the players he coaches. And there's no question in my mind that Al, along with them, can help them be the best players they can be. Zach, well, the uh, kill William situation was pretty high profile. I'm wondering if you had to address that at all with Graham and if so, how he has reacted to that? Yeah, I mean, you know, there was uh, a lot of that was uh, played out probably more so publicly than it was. But anytime something like that time, I'm gonna talk with him and 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 go. And and then I was I told Graham, you know, was he kind of I keep him as it went on. You know, I never personally spoke with Caleb, and you know, told Graham such and. and and so, yeah, I think he he understands. I mean, and that's the world that we're in right now. Um, so it really wasn't a ton, but you, you want to make sure you're always communicating with your players. Jeff, when you mentioned the running backs, you said three guys won't be doing much this game. I assume Malusi's one. Yep. Can you share who the other two are? Will be? Well, yes. <laughs> Isaac and Ship. Thank you. Those are three. Paul, oh, I was wondering if you could share um, how you maybe divvied up responsibilities with the assistants this year or with Bobby Ingram, where you want to put him and why you decided to do that. Yeah, so um, so kind of how our offensive staff will will look. You know, Al's coaching the running backs. Bo is coaching the offensive line. Chris Herring is uh, coaching the tight ends. Bobby's with the quarterbacks. And... Um, one other thing that we're doing this year is we're going to divide up the analysis of receivers. And then uh, special teams, we're kind of dividing that up amongst the, the staff. And so we'll have a number of coaches kind of be the lead coach on each individual unit. So, um, you know, we're not going to have just a specific special teams coordinator. Well, obviously, you're in the process of getting to the field and starting to put some of these changes in. But as you've worked with Bobby in the last month or so, what kind of changes do you envision with the offense, or what you guys are going to maybe tweak with it with his new ideas? Yeah, you know, I think fundamentally and philosophically, um, we see the game very similar, and and I think then you know that's a big part of spring is kind of. You know who who are we and and what are our strengths and weaknesses? Not that you're necessarily coming out of spring and this is who we are, but you get a good sense of it. And and so I think that again, that's a collaboration. And that 
you know, all right, where are we at in the offensive line? You know, where are we at with tight ends? Where we, what receivers kind of emerge? You know, we know a little bit more uh, this year going into this spring than we did last year at running back. You know, although we're going to have three not there, we do have a good sense even of, you know, what Chez can bring, what Ship can bring, and what Isaac can do. And, and you know, Braylon is going into his first spring, but, but obviously played a lot of football for us last year. And so I think it's, you know, you have a starting point of kind of the fundamental things that we want to do offensively. and. And then kind of as we find out who emerges and what are their strengths are, I think that kind of shapes out then what you really goes. I always think that the players are gonna define kind of the the personality of your of your unit, whether it's offensively or defensively or special teams. But um you know, I think it's not just Bobby that's got everyone's got ideas, you know, and you know, Bo's got things that he believes in in the run game, and, and Elvis now knows uh, this group of receivers he's working with, and there's some that he, he has a sense of, but, you know, Skyler's got one catch, Marcus has, you know, a couple catches, but played in a couple games. You know, we've moved Dean Ingram from defensive back over to receiver. Um, you know, Chim has played a lot of football. Chim is kind of, in many ways, is kind of a veteran in the room. But still a young, you know, young player in, in, in many ways, and so, um, you know, the, fundamentally on the same page, and yet, you know, it, each year we knew it was going to be different. And kind of talked about, you know, Jim asked it after the after the bowl game. You know, some of the changes that need to be made needed to be made. I think for us to go forward, and. Um, and, and Bobby brings in a new set of ideas, and and you know we've got some ideas that all the other coaches have had, and how do we put them together? Jake, say so Paul, with having Bob move over to the offensive line, just what type of conversations did you have with him to start that process, and how long did it take to for him to agree, and, and what fresh perspective do you think that he could bring to the group too? Well, when you know me and you know Bo. That's not going to be a real long conversation. <laughs> and so, uh, and I, I mean, I asked him, are you still a good line coach? <laughs> he said he thinks he is. I said, all right, you want to do it? <laughs> yeah, that was the end of it. Um, seriously. <laughs> and, you know, he's, uh, what is he going to bring? He's, you know, he's, he's going to bring... You know, we've been really fortunate. I think we've had really good line coaches. When I've been in Wisconsin, you know, whether it was when I first was here in, in Hughes and, you know, Rudy and Bo, um, all different. But Bo is, he's, he is a great teacher and he is, uh, he's relentless in his coaching. And, um, you know, he's he's got a, a belief in how you do it, and players understand it and buy into it, and and I'm excited for it. Jesse, well, you've uh, talked before about how quarterback play is predicated on a bunch of different factors, you know, how people block or, or you know run routes and things like that. But he also has the ball in his hands on on every yeah. offensive play. So we have had a chance to evaluate Graham last season. Um, what stands out about the areas that you think he needs to grow in, knowing there's a group around him that, as you listed before, are pretty inexperienced? Yeah, I think that, you know, it's, um, he's now had two seasons that he's played a lot of football in, and two seasons worth of opportunities, and, and times when he's done really, you know, some really good things, and, and then there's clips where you, this is what you've got to, this is where you absolutely have to get better at, and this you can't do anymore, right? I mean, you can be, the thing I've always appreciated about working with Graham is you, you can go direct with him, you know, and, and he, he cares, and he cares about this team first and foremost, and 
he also knows, and he'll put the time in, you know, so he he knows it, and so you, you know you break it down in, in all the different ways, and yet you still can go back to and need to go back, I think, to the fundamentals. You know, okay, when you're off on the locations, you know, yeah, the, the obvious is you miss the throw, right? What is causing it? And I think as you go through it, there's some things in in the drop and in the footwork that we can clean up that I think can make it a little bit more consistent. And I think that, you know, certainly like you mentioned, there's there's other pieces that have to be uh, consistent as well. But just from what he can do, you know, it's, you're talking about decision making, you know, and, and you know, one part is reading the coverage, right? When you talk about reading the coverage, what you're really trying to find is where is the one-on-one. -on -one. And now you gotta know, is your one-on-one -on -one winning? And, and that's a big part of it. And so, you know, whoever the receiver is, you know, not necessarily wide receiver, but whoever the receiver is, if you're one-on-one, -on -one, you've got to know how to win. And, and, and the design of the play has to be such that it gives them a chance to win. But I think, you know, for Graham, it's, it's, you know, how do you still be better or be more consistent in your decision-making? And then when it's the actual execution, you know, he's, he's a talented thrower. You know, he can throw every type of throw. And I think then you take a look at, okay, what when you're missing, why are you missing? I think it's, there's things that come back to just the drop and the, and the rhythm of it. And I think there's some things that he can work on just in the pocket and kind of when it's not necessarily a clean, clean pocket, but how do you move in the pocket? Maybe a small movement, maybe it's a bigger movement. I think that's an area that he, he can work on and needs to get better at. And you know, in the end, you, you are talking about, you mentioned it in the question, you, the ball's in his hand. And you know, one obvious area that we've got to improve upon is taking care of the football. And you know, I think we had 13 interceptions last year. You know, Graham had 12 and Chase, or Graham had 11 and Chase had two. You know, and then we had a couple more that you know kind of strip sacks. But one where we didn't block anyone. He got against blindside against Purdue. He's got one against Notre Dame. He's got one and another one against Army where we kind of lose it. Chase has two, right? So we got to take care of the football. We got a couple of exchange problems with the running backs. You know, and. and Shoot the first game is a great example of it, you know. And so it's all those things that that the ball is in your hand. And if we're going to be better at taking care of the ball, all right, certainly the one that's got the ball in his hand the most is going to be responsible for more of it. And he's got to take that upon himself with everyone else. He doesn't have to bear the whole burden by any means, but it's going to start with him. And so I think that's why I get excited. I'm excited for Graham this spring. I'm excited for, we do have young, you know, we don't have Ferg anymore. That, you know, Ferg was a heck of a player. And, you know, you don't have that. And so I think it'll be in some ways, you know, you're gonna have to work through that, you know, make sure the receivers are all doing what they need to be, whether it's wide receivers or running backs or tight ends. But at the same point, you know, make it your group. You know, go ahead and you lead the group. You know, you're not playing second field or someone. And so I think it's a great opportunity for him this spring. Steve. The receivers, what's the next step you want to see Shim take? And who are some other guys maybe you're looking forward to seeing with or what the guys you have part in that position? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, Jim is, uh, I, I've, I've loved the, the trajectory he's been on. You know, he comes in as a true freshman. We don't have spring ball that year, and he comes in and, and impacts it. And I thought last year really, really stepped up in, in kind of his, just the whole approach that he took. And I'm excited for him to, you know, what we need is that room, the whole room to, to play like Jim plays and approach each day like Jim approached it. I mean, Jim's got a great uh, intentional work ethic. And obviously we think he's talented. And, you know, he, he, he there's not one part that you say, boy, he's lacking, but there's not one part, and he'd be the first one to say it, is that he, he's not gonna work on and improve. And, and so I think that, you know, anytime you're going, it's, 
you know, continuing to understand the game, you know, and understand defenses and understand what you're doing and, and how are you do, doing what you're doing and, you know, putting yourself and your body in position to make plays. But uh, love the way that he approaches everything. He's that tremendous winner. And, you know, there's a group, a lot of guys, I like the talent in that, in that room. And yeah, guys got to go out and do it, and they got to do it consistently. Okay. Well, I know you mentioned the three running backs, but are there any others, players that you're foreseeing being limited or out this spring? Yep. Um, I don't have them in front of me. Do you have one? I have a whole roster. <laughs> What's that? I have a whole roster. <laughs> You don't come to practice and find out. <laughs> I mean, there's, I'm trying to think. Uh, yeah, for sure the three running backs. There's a list. we got a few more. Yeah, you got to do your work. <laughs> That's about it, isn't it? <laughs> Paul, when you have a team that's got, like you said, a little bit of Turnover all these kind of important spots. You mentioned the inside linebackers and all these spots. What are some of the things that you guys look for in the transfer portal to kind of make up for that? Because you talk about the, the corners, guys that are all in their fifth or sixth year in yeah. college. Like, was that something when you were looking at transfers, you were bringing guys that you knew knew how to play college football? You were weren't worried about that part of what they were going to bring? Yeah, and, and I don't I don't profess to have all the answers, but the way I felt that we wanted to approach the how we might use the transfer portal was that if there was someone if there was a position that maybe not a position of need but where if you brought someone in I thought it was important if you brought someone in they better be able to to play like they've got one opportunity and, and so we're not doing that player any good if there's not a position spot for an opportunity for the play. And they've got to go out and they've got to earn that. And and yet, you know, kind of we thought that corner was one of those, you know. Um, like the corners we had in the program, but kind of the way that combination of, of recruiting and injuries and really, you know, with C's coming back again, you know, we're going to lose and there's going to be a kind of a void that if we could fill that. And then I thought the other way to approach the, the portal was if there was someone that was a good fit that, that had time to do, develop. And I thought we did that with with Kiantas. You know, so I think it kind of, those are the two types that you're kind of looking for. And certainly, you know, the, the kicker and Beatle, you know, it's a chance to, felt like there was a spot for him. You know, so not that, you know, I don't think you can ever go out and say this is your spot, right? They've got to go out and earn it. But you better have a pretty good understanding of what you have and their talents and that they've got a really good chance to to play. Otherwise, I don't think you're doing them or your program, you know, a favor. Sorry. Well, I know you guys had people in the recruiting office working since Saeed uh, left last June. But not having Mickey in place until last month, do you put, think that puts you behind in any way, uh, whether it's this class or next class or class down the road? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, certainly, you know, we, we didn't stop recruiting. You know, it put more on everyone's plate. But to say we're behind, I, I don't know. And like you, I think you said it, if anywhere it'd be not the class we're recruiting, not even, you know, now you're recruiting kind of three, three and a half classes. And so, you know, it could have, maybe, I don't know, right? You, you don't know. But uh, I, I do feel confident. I know, you know, a lot of people, we all had to do more. And, and yet, I thought it kind of fit what we needed to do. And I appreciate that from the staff. You know, guys jumped in and I think there was, there was something about that that was still really healthy. And I think something we've got to hold onto in, 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 in many regards, you know, you know, for a long time, that's the way you did go about recruiting. And, and I think what's changed is, you know, as you evaluate more people because you're evaluating more classes, that's where you, you kind of need the help, 
but as far as the actual recruiting identification, and a lot of it was tricky. I don't know because part of it was with COVID, you had a number of players that didn't play a, a year, you know, and, and then we had, heck, last spring, you know, Braylon's still playing high school football. You, you know what I mean? So there was, there's a lot of things that coincide with it that, that I don't know that, that I'd have the, the correct answer on, on where it's at. You, you know, you feel like you're always working at recruiting. And so I don't think I've ever felt like, boy, we got this thing right where we need it ever. And yet I also didn't feel like, boy, we're, we're not doing anything or we're so far behind. But um, I like certainly where we're at now and going forward. Um, but I think it's, it was kind of a unique set of circumstances on a few different ends to be able to gauge it. I think it's, it's a little bit more tricky than had it just been kind of a normal type of years. All right, thank you. Thank you.